this episode is going to be a lot of fun because we are sitting around the table talking with Spencer. But we have a very specific conversation in mind. Typically, we would, we would have our guests and we would talk to them about them. But we thought that uh, we don't know many more Star Wars fans who are bigger Star Wars fans than Spencer. Star Wars came out this weekend. And so why not have an in-depth Star Wars spoiler-ridden oh, yes. um, conversation about Star Wars The Last Jedi. So just spoiler alert from this point forward. If you have not seen Last Jedi, turn this off. Yeah. Don't, now. Yeah, Unless you don't care. If you don't care about spoilers, that's fine. Then you probably won't care about the discussion we're getting right now. Kylo kills Snoke. So, okay. <laughs> there we go. That's, so that's, if you didn't, we told you what to do. So there, that's what you get. Yeah. So anyway, everybody, welcome Spencer to the show. Hey. Wait, Thanks, we guys. have to address the other thing too. Oh yeah, we're, we're all right table. here. Oh, yeah. This is real. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> hi. You. Oh, I just assumed that you were. Uh, <laughs> Force like projecting yourself here from Ohio. Oh, oh, I see how that works. Yeah. I'm not that powerful. Let's see. So Does bef- this go through him. Wait, wait, wait. Before- oh! <laughs> <laughs> nope. He's here. So before we uh, before we jump into the Star Wars conversation, Spencer, why are you uh, sitting at this table? I think you just said that. I know, but like, talk to us about your history of Star Wars, just real quick. Um, my first movie memory is the trash compactor scene from Star Wars Episode Four. Yeah. I actually did not know movies were fake at that time and genuinely thought I was about to watch my heroes get crushed. And I remember standing in front of my TV, holding it on either side, screaming, like, get out, save them, 3PO. It was was this small, but still, I I didn't know. And so since then, I've just been in love with Star Wars. Nice. Um, So I've seen all the movies, obviously. But yeah, since then, it's just been a part of my life. It's never gone away. My dog's name was Luke. My aim handle was Spin Luke. Um, Everything has sort of been... That's where it comes from. Yeah. I just assumed his middle name was Luke. No. My middle name is Spencer. Oh, okay. I, Thanks, brother-in-law. His, fi- um, <laughs> so. his first name is, is Margaret. Your last name, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Spencer Howard. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, it's just always been a part of my life. It's never gone away. Um, and my child is named after a Star Wars Rebels character, Ezra. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was the one name I could get away with that didn't necessarily sound like a Star Wars name on the surface. Uh, yeah. And also, my dog's name was Luke, so it was taken. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's just always been a part of my life. And and yeah, and you're a big you're a big film guy, so this yeah. like all this whole thing makes sense. Yeah, I, I would honestly say this is my first uh, the the thing that sparked my love of film. Um, I've gone beyond just like science fiction and stuff, but it's always been the constant in my life. Yeah, and so yeah, it's it's this is the first movie love of my life, and it has remained. Now, have you seen the newest film? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I've seen, seen it. it. Yes, We've I've all seen it. it. And I in have. fact, who here is? Seen it more than one time. Okay, so gotcha. So we have like probably between us like six viewings so yeah. far. Yeah, six viewings. And That's we have at, at least a few more lined up for the next 24 hours. Yeah, I'm seeing it tomorrow with Cooper. Yeah, at the latest tomorrow afternoon, I'm seeing it again. Yep. Yeah. So I might see it with the boys tomorrow. It's possible. Oh. Yeah, so there's lots of seeing it. Yeah. So we, we know what we're talking about. We're all Star Wars fans. Um, maybe yeah. some more than others, but that's to be yeah. expected. Um, no reason to get upset about I would who's say more of a fan than another. I'm yeah. more of a fan of Star Wars than I am of dogs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. that's probably a safe bet. Um, yeah. So uh, general thoughts. Oh, you're really making this broad. Yeah, I want to know general, like, I want, like... Kick it off, then. Go. Okay, uh, I, so I gave it... I'm just going to start by my rating. Yeah. I rated it with a 7 okay. out of 10. Um, and that's we're, there's an asterisk next to that if you listen to the show. Um, we always give it a rating between 1 and 10. Um, and my, my asterisk is that I've only seen it once. Sure. And a lot of that was I was trying to process who... Like what was happening? Like, and and I don't think I gave I couldn't I can't give the film a, like a hard like a hard rating based on one viewing because there was so much happening that first time that you have to kind of decompress and then watch it again to appreciate it. So, yeah. um, so I gave it a seven. Uh, there was some stuff that I just really didn't like. I didn't feel like it was like there was some stuff that felt like quintessential Star Wars, and then some stuff that felt so far off the beaten path that it was hard for me to reconcile it yeah and then the lack of questions being answered or the questions that were answered and i just flat out hated their their, like how their they reasoned the answer yeah was enough to make me um i mean visually it was stunning um 
it was good, but a seven out of ten right now. I imagine it will go up. Even in the conversations that we've been having about it, I've already started processing things from a new perspective. So seeing it again, it'll probably go up, but that's where I sit right now. And let me ask you, you touched on, you said visually that you liked it. You kind of <laughs> touched on like the answers being a problem. Tone of the film as far as the amount of like levity versus serious. Too much levity, in my opinion. So that's part of what's factoring into yourself. Yeah, too much levity. And, and it, didn't, it didn't all hit for me. Like... It felt like they were trying to insert um, Star Lord brand or like Guardi- Guardians of the Galaxy brand humor into the, a universe that has been very lacking in that area. Now I do understand, and we're going to talk about this at, uh, during this conversation, that they're trying to turn they're trying to turn the corner with Star Wars a little bit and create yeah. its own new universe. Yeah, and there's kind of a handing of the baton, <clears throat> so I can appreciate it from that perspective. But I don't think all the jokes landed for me. All right, so Luke. Yeah. Um... So my rating is a five right now, and I think it's because a lot of what Andrew said, um, touching on the just the levity aspect, is very much not a series that has... There's funny parts, but it's not a series built on comedy. And I think a lot of these jokes in this film were um, just put in there to make the characters, like, just to have a joke. And they didn't really fit the character. Like, it was just... A, a lot of them, I were, they were funny. Like, none of the jokes, like, were bad jokes, but they just didn't feel like they fit. Would you say none of the jokes were bad jokes, but some of the jokes were dad jokes? Yeah, yeah. I would say that. Um, there's that. I felt like... So the whole thing of this movie, the major theme that I got from it is out with the old and with the new and deal with it. And I don't think in a world, uh, in the universe of Star Wars, I don't think that's easily accomplished. I don't think you can just rip the Band-Aid off because you pride yourself on on so much history and so much of the world. And this is stuff that, you know, you have to build upon and you have to know this history to go in. You have to, like, you can't just jump into Star Wars um, and... And just go from wherever. You have to kind of start at the beginning to really understand the story of what's going on. And to just throw that away, I understand needing to go in a new direction and have new heroes and and have new experiences. But I I think the way they did it in this film was, was a little disrespectful to the fans and the property. Um, It was a little bit too much of a just deal with it. And it didn't feel good as a fan. Like, I mean, like, I am not the biggest Star Wars fan, but I'm a Star Wars fan. Like, my name is Luke. I grew up with the Luke, I am your father from everybody. Was your middle name Ezra? Yeah. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Um, But, like, it's, like, I internalize, like, Luke is, Luke is the character that, like, I loved. And I felt like in this movie... I didn't know that guy. Like, there were hints of it, but he was not he was not the character that I knew, and I didn't like that. Um, visually, it's stunning. It's, it looks amazing. It sounds amazing. There are really cool moments in the film. But overall, I think it was a little flippant in the way the story was told, and it just hurts. So that's my take. Wow, so Luke is offended at the film. So Ryan Not Johnson, offended you offended at the film. How I'm... dare you release this film and hurt my friend? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, okay. I know that's fine. No, you so a five, and it sounds like you might be leaning towards a four. It no. It doesn't sound like you're on the high end of the five spectrum. Well, no, I think you a five is a very fair rating. Yeah. So I, I and I already told you all this, uh, it feels like a ten to me. And I, realistically, there are things that I'm frustrated at. So realistically, you know, it's an 8 or a 9. But it feels like a 10. I've seen it twice now. And, um, and for me, uh, absolutely essential theme being out with the old and with the new. But um, I, I think a, a better way of saying that, and I, I see a very strong biblical parallel to this, which is this idea that um, initially, like if I'm thinking um, uh, kind of, Old Testament, it's these sacred people, sacred texts, sacred buildings. And then you have this Jesus character that comes in and says, no, away with that. You don't need 
Like you don't need people above you interpreting it. You don't need a wall between you and this. Like you have the power inside of you. And I think in a lot of ways, this is saying you, you don't have to have, it doesn't have to be Jedi that saved the day. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, these, these other people that have the lineage or, or whatever. It, it can be the everyman. And I think that's what I took away from it. So in a lot of ways, I think it follows very closely a biblical parallel. And, um, and, and I love that. And it, it, Definitely, Luke still stays a central uh, character in that because he's the one that's pushing that direction now. He also has Yoda step in to kind of help him like continue that path because even he has struggled with it. Um, but but I, I do love that idea that uh, the power and the responsibility belongs to everyone. You know, in some ways, Ray was trying to pawn off responsibility uh, because she wanted Luke to come in and save the day. And I just like the idea that it's on everybody to um, to take up that call. Would you say that Finn was doing the same thing with Ray? Oh, I, I think, yeah, I, I absolutely. I think the only person trying to take responsibility, I would say, would be Poe. <laughs> like, Poe kept... <laughs> He's just... a freaking go-getter. Yeah. <laughs> and he got chastised for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the, the other part to me... Um, uh, so, so it was that idea of get rid of the sacred texts, the sacred people, the sacred buildings. Um, and then the other, the other idea was that uh, we don't need heroes. We need people to, to survive. And Rose said it just very on the nose when she said the idea is that you don't win by um, killing the people hate, you hate. It's by uh, like taking, protecting saving the people the you, love you love or saving the people you love. Yeah. And, um, and I think that was the other thing is that, that largely this has – all been about who's the hero that goes in in the dangerous situation and like like scrapes out and makes it out alive and this film was saying no that that's that's not what we need because at the end of the day if everybody's a hero everybody's going to be dead we, we need we need preservation we need to look out for each other and not just run into every dangerous situation we need to not rebel well, it's it's again, it's how you go about it. So anyway, so um, so I I love the film. I, I thought it was uh, definitely a very pretty film. I, it, there was some mismatch to me. Like there were a couple times the cinematography is like suddenly felt like it, it felt like a different film for for like a scene, and then it would come back, and then it would feel like a cohesive piece. Um, so there were a couple things like that. Um, I liked how. Um, I, you know, I think the humor is great. And actually, I perceive the, if I'm thinking of the original trilogy, as being pretty silly. And, and there's like the deleted scene with like C-3PO when he pulls the sign like uh, off of the door and like two stormtroopers open it and get eaten immediately. You know, it's like silly things like that that I feel like that tone kind of made it into this film. And, and so I, I feel like this is in line, but I will also say this to everybody. I am the least involved in this world. So sure. I, I haven't, so I know the least in this, in this room. Um, but I do like the tone and I, I love things like uh, the use of puppets and, and animatronics and stuff like that. And I love that it, all of those elements had a very retro feel to yeah. them, um, which was like really cool. So uh, I really enjoyed the, the film personally, um, but it does have flaws, but we'll talk about those in just a bit. Yeah, so we actually had this conversation yesterday, and I said it felt like a 10. I think it was probably more realistically an 8.5. Um, it's one of those things where I think it's a little overlong in sections. Things should sure. be trimmed. But I enjoyed myself in those moments so much that while I can objectively go, I think the Canto Bite stuff goes on too long. Um, but BB-8, like having coins spew out of him like he was Sonic the Hedgehog, it just like it cracked me up, and yeah. I enjoyed it. So... As much as I could be critical, I don't think I'm able to do that objectively because I just love sure. spending time with sure. everyone on screen. So I loved it, very much so. I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm, I may actually, if I'm lucky, I get to see it tonight, tomorrow, and then Wednesday. So like, I'm, nice. I'm excited to just go back and back. But the thing for me about Star Wars is that everybody's Star Wars is valid. Like your, yeah. your version and your fan relationship is just as valid yeah. as yours and yours, Patrick, where you say you're not as involved. Yours is just as valid as Luke's. Yeah, which one's Luke? But, but the, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. The one without the beard? <laughs> the dog. Um, so, Hans Solo is Hans, not in this one. No, it's Hans Olo. He's, Hans he's Olo was so, not in this one. But as I'm watching it, I felt like the film 
really said, here's all of the things Star Wars can be, all of them, even the stuff that's in the cartoons and sure. in the books. It's, it's We're going to do some weird stuff with the Force some of you have never seen before, and that's going to make the casual viewer potentially uncomfortable or even the more in-depth viewer uncomfortable. Sure. And I kept thinking the conversations that are going to come from this Star Wars movie are, could potentially be the most engaging since the prequels, but in a positive way. Sure. Because I feel like the conversation yeah. was pretty intense after the prequels, yeah. but very negative yeah. yeah but like you and you we've had very different takes yeah. on everything but yeah. our conversations have been so good because yeah, right. of how different it is yeah and so because of that i just went i felt like they put on a platter here's all of the things star wars can be love it or hate it let's talk about it it does and that's feel like it's a bit of a culmination of clo- like you're talking you're talking about the cartoons or whatever but mm-hmm. like the clone wars and the uh rebels. star wars rebels mm-hmm. Incorporating some of that, so I haven't watched Star Wars Rebels all the way through. Yep. You, you made, uh, you, you said yesterday that, um, uh, what's his name? Kanan. Kanan mm-hmm. used the a very similar or exact uh, kind of force fly. Yeah, <laughs> super Leia. Yeah, su- yeah, super Leia. That's a layer. Um, that super he Leia. that he did that in the show. So that wasn't an it wasn't an introduction into the Star Wars universe in this film. It was. A, an introduction to the live universe in this film, yeah. but um, and that sort of stuff just really had me like excited. Like I wanted sure. to, cl- like I clapped some, and I got very like like oh like like yeah. vocal in the theater because yeah. I was so excited. Because when so in Rebels when uh, so Darth Maul pushes Kanan out of a shoot yeah. and he goes out into space and they're like they're gonna kill the, m- the main character on a kids show yeah, yeah. and then. It's exactly what Leia does when she's blown out of the ship occurs, and she force pulls herself back in, yeah. and that's what he does. Yeah. And then immediately online, people reacted like, "How could that possibly happen?" And but the story group two years ago gets to say, "Well, first of all, there's noise in space in Star Wars, so let's put science to the right. side, yeah. and let's talk about the fun of the Force and how cool was it that right. it happened." So, but I like that now they can say that on a live action, much larger canvas because. I don't think Rebels gets more than a million views. I mean, sure. it's not that many people watching it in the bigger Star Wars right. scheme of things. So it's nice to see, for me, things cross over, and I just dig it. And and if someone doesn't like it, that's no problem. But I'm like, but you saw it. Like, you see so, this sure. so let different. So let me, on that note, though, I think I, I think I am feeling the reverse side of your excitement yeah. because I read the books. So I don't I don't watch the Rebels, but mm-hmm. I I read the books and I was waiting for some of that crossover to happen in these first two films in mm-hmm. Force Awakens and in um, The Last Jedi. And there was just blatant areas where I felt like they left obvious connections out where they could have had it and that would like what like where um like the explanation like they haven't explained phasma at all and we know her backstory and she has an incredible backstory and lots of ties to other characters yeah um we lose her completely kind of treated her like a lead dummy i I believe (laughs) like boba fett she's this generation of boba fett there's a whole a whole other story to luke that we don't catch anymore and i and i honestly think that there were some ties to ray um, that could have come out of that, and I and the the kind of um, I don't want to say it, they, I don't know that they were intentionally left out, or maybe they just weren't the story that you know whatever. But if these other stories were canon, and they are all now canon, then where is that stuff? I want to see it. I want to see someone force pull themselves in. I want that same equivalent mm-hmm. in from the books, and we haven't gotten that in the films. The films still feel solely. Separate yeah. from what the books are setting up, and and all of these books say, you know, journey to the Force Awakens, journey to the Last Jedi, and the idea behind the books is that they will give you hints and information that will help you better understand the film, or that you can look forward to in the or film. That, that, but then there's been there's no there hasn't yet been a payoff right um, that would give me one of those clap in the theater excited moments where yeah. yes I knew that was coming because I've experienced that before in another in another you know would you agree that with the books though because I'm I'm reading the books I'm a little behind the curve but I have my stack I'm slowly yeah. moving down yeah. that they're much more grounded in the people side of Star Absolutely. Wars. Yeah. So to me, I feel like the books are the answer to all of the complaints about the politics and the prequels because now we get all of that stuff 
in the books. Like we get the right. government workings of the, the human level. And then on in the visual sense, then we're getting the force stuff. And sure. there's like this strict division. I, I know the Luke Skywalker book, you're talking about the legends of Luke yeah, Skywalker, yeah. but isn't the whole idea behind that book that it's the literal, like it's the legends of Luke Skywalker. It's not necessarily his actual history because they were, they were very clear that they're not going to tell anything about him before it's on screen. That's real. That's a hundred percent concrete. And that book is different people's stories of Luke Skywalker. Right? Uh, you're talking, so you're talking about the one that's in in preparation for the Last Jedi. Yeah. So there's one that was in preparation for the Force Awakens. Yeah. I don't okay. think it was called the Legend. I think is it was it just called Luke Skywalker Jedi? or something. No, I think it was just called Luke Skywalker or so, something like there were there was one for Hans, <laughs> there was one for <laughs> oh, no. uh, for Leia, and there was one for Luke. Yeah. And they were like the one little, for Luke told the story of him finding the temple for the first time. Find, yeah, finding the okay. oldest the, the oldest Jedi temple yeah. and meeting this guys. Um, one time I. Called Han Solo Hans. We yes. called him the Hans. And I just need everyone to know that. Yeah. Everyone that's listening and <laughs> I just watching. I everyone to know that. Anyway, just, so that's I don't the want story. y'all to sound dumb. I, I don't that. want someone to think like, oh, Andrew said Hans. What an idiot. No, uh, it's me, everybody. Thank you for taking that idiot. burden. I do appreciate that. You're welcome. So that's, that's what I mean. So, yeah. th- and this one was, a, this is, uh, it was recanted by C3PO. I got you. So yeah. this okay. is a, like, they, that's what for me was solidified. My only yeah. thing, and I don't think this is necessarily correct um, because I feel like they both kind of felt the same way. My my only thing specifically about the Ray's lineage or her history is that in that scene, Snoke literally says that I was the one bridging the gap and I was the one feeding certain thoughts and emotions in order to create this scenario. Yeah, so let's see, right? And so I'm just saying, like, I think they could very easily say that what Kylo saw was something that Snoke was feeding or what she felt was something Snoke was feeding and not actually reality. I just, I feel like that they could come back in the next film and there could be and something answer that. But here's, yeah. so here's, the, here's the other thing with that. Um, Ryan Johnson has gone on record mm-hmm. multiple times saying he has been given complete autonomy with this Literally film through the lightsaber in the very first 20 seconds yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so he's been given complete autonomy with this film, which is good for a filmmaker, but I don't know if it's great for people who, I, I don't know that it's great for everybody, um, because there is stuff that J.J. Abrams set up in his, in his, you know, new, t- and, and maybe this is what we're going to experience with just different people having, um, their hands on the reins of Star Wars, yeah. because up to this point, it's been one person telling the story. Now there's two people in the same story arc telling their version yeah, of so it. Yeah, so nine is, nine is back to JJ, right? JJ, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And then Ryan Hallelujah. is doing all three of the new ones. Well, he, yeah. Yeah. So let me, because I think we're in this topic. So I Wait, can, this. I, can I add Can I add just one stupid question that I might have missed? Yeah. Why is C-3PO's arm gold again, not red? It's a comic. It's a comic. He, it talks about how he gets it fixed, too. Cool, he cool. Because he that, couldn't stand the difference. Yeah, that was one thing that yeah, I noticed. It wasn't red in the first place, just got to delineate. Eaten off. He got stranded on a planet, got eaten off by something, and then he got a red replacement. Because yeah. he made okay. a friend with another droid who was kind of an evil droid and became a nice droid, gave him the red arm to be nice. Nice. Perfect. This is nice to have around. It no, is I nice. Know. You're, like, you're like, like uh, together we yeah. kind of get the whole picture. Yeah. It's like this the thing. encyclopedia. So uh, I, I mentioned um, family and history. So uh, we're going to be throwing out some... Uh, comments from yeah. the discussion that's been happening in the Master One Slack. This has been the most engaging There's, conversation in Slack. It's, we're 255 comments deep so far. On yeah, as of the recording. I feel like you have 50 of those comments. No, 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 no. I, I, I was and heavy all of them were just. I think it's a 10. And I then, think it's a 10. And then the other 50. <laughs> Stop saying bad up. things. The other 50 are Jedi. <laughs> there was literally one point where I was like, well, Jedi, I have the mic, so I'll say what I feel like saying. And I'm just... Um, Although his name says Jedi, so that's true. true. Uh, that's Jedi true. rabies, because <laughs> he got bit by Carrie Fisher's dog, <laughs> Gary. Um, all right, Trey Wait, Sprinkle. Carrie Fisher's dog is named Gary. That's funny. Yeah, it's like Carrie Fisher and Gary Fisher. Yeah, it's kind of because it's like Carrie and Gary. What kind of you dog know is it? so much about this? Is no, I do. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's. Ten percent Pomeranian. Uh, it's five percent a Labradoodle, which is already a combination Labrador and Poodle. Nice. And then Poodle. Um, <laughs> poodle. And it, so I we're looking. We're looking at two and a half percent Poodle in this dog. Is what we're and then uh, uh, it's five uh, percent Boston Terrier. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's twenty five percent Chihuahua, which is weird. That's where the tongue comes from. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And most then, dogs have tongues. I think most dogs have tongues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then it's then whatever the majority of it is. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Great, great day. Great day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, Trey Sprinkle says, um, let's talk about Snoke. 
I fully expected that storyline to be something more spectacular, but no, it was cut in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally cut in half. So here's my whole problem with that. And it, this is all, everything I'm going to say is going to go back to just the rip off the Band-Aid thing. Like, I just, I think there was a lot set up in the first one that just kind of was like, yeah, oh well. And Snoke, like, is this crazy evil being in the first one. We know nothing about him. He's this huge hologram. We see him in this movie doing things more powerful than anybody else we've ever seen before. Yeah, he's like, I mean, he's, he's, I wouldn't say more powerful, but he's at least emperor <coughs> level. Yes. Right. I mean, it, but they never refer to him as a Sith, but he does refer to him as his, as his apprentice. Yeah. So, but in the end, it was just a like, a double force move of turning a lightsaber and shooting it through his side that kills him. Like, and he doesn't see it coming. I loved that though. I think it's so dumb. I loved his death. I think Not- it spoke to the power of Kylo Ren though, that right. he could focus his thoughts for Snoke and then also do that without but, Snoke ever feeling But Snoke it saying he can see his thoughts and see what he's doing, that doesn't make any sense. The thoughts that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying is that that, Ky- that shows the power of Kylo, that he now understands how much Snoke can see into it and uh-huh. he can control what he's right. seeing as well. Because it, it goes, it's referenced over and over again how strong Ben is. Right. right? And so to me, that's the moment of him embracing his sure. inner strength sure. for real. And Snoke, and Snoke was saying what he was seeing, but... The thing that was blocked off from Snoke is who the target was. Right. He was he saying, I see the tr- he, lightsaber turning. I see. Yeah. yeah. He was saying he's, all yeah, of that. And he's going to, it's going to kill your, it's going to kill. It's basically like, target, yeah, right? intended target or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what happened. The only thing Snoke didn't see is who the target who was. The target sure. was. Which, I just thought it was too easy. Which arguably set up one of the two best scenes I've ever seen in a film. Sure. Like that payoff <laughs> oh, was oh amazing. Gosh. Like that payoff was uh, and you've seen the film already if you've seen if you're this far in the episode but when they when they go back to back and fight and fight i can't if you are watching this and you're an artist please make a print of that cuz i'm going to buy it cuz it's it's going to be this is an easy sale yeah. yeah yeah this is an easy sale um <laughs> ah, i see what you did yeah cuz that's my last name and middle name <laughs> <laughs> sale, sale. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, we um, have another. No, we'll, we'll save, it. save it. Okay, <clears throat> we would have had talked about this on Tuesday's That's episode. What I realized. <laughs> <laughs> already passed. Go back and listen um, to Tuesdays. We'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, but uh, man, that scene was amazing, and I think you're right. I think it, it set up the fact it, it showed the power of Ben to be able to deceive the deceiver i think in that moment so in the force awakens i think everyone felt kylo when he kills his dad when he kills hans that that is the (laughs) moment he goes to the dark side yeah but we see in the beginning of this film when he can't pull the trigger on his mom that wasn't the moment that was the moment probably ultimate conflict for him yeah i think in this moment that's when he embraces the dark side the most because he can full snow well and in fact i so they're both fighting it's interesting because you'd think that it would be Sorry, but you'd think that it would be like the moment that he kills someone who's ultimately good, but it's more the fact that he can kill somebody who's ultimately bad Mm -hmm. in the way that he does it. Because that was his leader figure. Yeah, he kills him because he wanted complete control. That was the whole, like he fully became... He Plus, fully succumbed Snoke to the took dark his side. robe. That was his gold robe prior to Snoke wearing it. <laughs> and he wouldn't let him wear like his helmet. S- he wanted to wear the helmet. Did Snoke, yeah. did anybody else see Hugh Laurie's face and Snoke's face? No. no. After you said, you said it, I can't it. stop Go seeing it. Yeah. Because you're, you're all going to watch it again. Yeah. Think of Dr. House next time you see Snoke. Yeah. At least for the cool, bottom that will half. totally help me stay in the story. Well, <laughs> so what I was going to say is I actually, the moment that I think Kylo really fully went one direction uh-huh. was when they were fighting over the lightsaber. I actually still felt like there there was, like it wasn't resolved. Yeah. And I think when the lightsaber split, it throws Ray all the way one direction and it throws him all the way the other direction. And I think that was the moment where she realized that like she fully embraced the good part and then right. he fully embraces the bad. That's yeah. what yeah. I was felt a, in that moment. It, it sure. was a visual. It was a visual interpretation of what was happening emotionally between the two because of them. Because they had tension. They couldn't be further yeah. apart now. Right. Yes. And they need to live in that reality. Yeah. Now. So okay. Um, so jumping on to another battle. So so there's. But who was Snoke? 
Yeah, that annoys me. I told you it's Dr. House. So listen, the book set up several potential people who it could be, and they answer none of them. But they still could in the next film. Why would they? Well, yeah, but why? At this point, what does it matter? Other than for the satisfaction of... of maybe because J.J. sitting they at won't. home like, Ryan... They, they won't. Well, maybe. I hope that's happening. I hope that's <laughs> JJ happening. J.J. never has answers. You guys, everyone's talking about J.J.'s going to... He, ne- he has great yeah, he's, questions. He's not going to answer he any questions. He does not questions. answer things we, well. Our, our chance for answers would have been this movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, because, yeah. Maybe, maybe the... Maybe the, uh, the... What's it called? The cartoon I pickup. feel like this is going to go down in history as the Star Wars that people go... It's the it's the one that's different. But like the last like move, it's the, the one last that everything major changes. Movie, everyone was saying the whole like, well, it's just a copy of whatever. Like, of, they just can't keep yeah. doing that, or people are going to stop watching. Eventually, that's true. It has to be their that own is true. Because like, oh, it's another Death Star, but it's just Star yeah. Killer base. Yeah. So I've been talking to a bunch of friends who were um, in Empire in the theater when it came out. Yeah. And the Darth Vader reveal. Yeah. I wish we had like. Twitter then. Yeah. Because right. apparently the reaction across the board was mostly negative. Sure. I can't believe they would do this. Why is this happening? It was now it's iconic in a cultural moment for yeah. everybody. Right. But at that time it was very negative. So I fall on a different perspective of going, I think with time, people are gonna look at this in the positive way they look at Empire, but for this trilogy. I don't think so. I think it's gonna be the one that this is when everything changed for Star Wars. It's going to be, this is the one that's different. Oh, it's, I think it changes in a positive way. Let's, uh, let's yeah. jump into another. I have another comment from Slack, but it's about another big battle. So the, obviously, the, we, we don't have answers on Snoke. We don't know. That, that, that scene was great. The other one is going to be when Kylo faces off against Luke. And yeah. um, so uh, the comment from Not Cool was saying that she actually realized what was happening because um, she said the lightsaber was um, the wrong color. It was a lightsaber that was already destroyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did anybody here I, pick up what was I picked did, up on totally. the color? But I, I did the first time through. Then it was green? No, it's blue. blue. It's blue. Yeah, because it was blue. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up on the color, but I didn't. I kept going. I, I didn't keep going anything. I was so into it. I just yeah. went, "That's blue," and then kept going on with the story. Like yeah. I didn't think anything beyond, "Oh, it's not green." I didn't pick up on it at so, all. Like I, no, I, it came out, and it was not green, and I went, "Something is different. Like something's wrong." I was trying to figure out how he got. So there. Someone so, pointed out hair too. Someone how do you? Yes, how his do you? Hair, hair was younger. Well, and he's so younger. He's he, all the way. Yeah. He doesn't. So the second time through, I don't think he looked as young as I thought he did the first time. I thought the first time he just cleaned himself up. That's what I thought. To go and be presentable. Like he got his from, hair cut. He yeah, died. He, his, he got some just well, for men. I think, combed it in. I think maybe he just cut his beard and it looked darker after it was cut. And like he combed his hair, cut his hair, and like. But he was actually force pushing. Do you think him. that's how he sees himself internally? Well, yeah. I think, no, I think that's how Kylo saw him. Yes, last. that's, that's it. how Kylo that's, saw that him. That's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, I think. That, Kylo sees what he what he knows Luke to be right. in his mind, and that was the last vision he saw. Oh, of him. I see. Now here's the thing, which is I weird d- though, because Ray saw Kylo shirtless and asked him to put clothes. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't know that that theory actually matches up. He might have he might have been in that gold robe at it's the time. A- <laughs> <laughs> she just took it's it off. Nice in theory, but just just saying. Um, one thing that I didn't note that I wanted to on the next uh, watch is. Did Luke look any different when he was talking to Leia in the base versus when he was in front of That's Kylo? That's my question. understanding because I did a lot of reading and listening over the weekend. Yeah. I've listened to like eight podcasts at this point about this thing. But yeah. apparently he is the same um, as he is with Kylo okay. with Leia. It's, it's all the same. Okay. And so and a lot of the the fan logic at this point is is that it's presenting what they would know from the last time they saw sure. each other. Saw. Because around the last time... Uh, in theory, the, and, and the last time that he saw Ben was also around the last time he saw Leia. Sure. So he presents himself he in a familiar way. Right. But what's interesting is it, it's not addressed is the question of um, is Leia, because she's obviously more force sensitive than we ever knew. We knew she yeah. was a Skywalker. We knew she had the power, but she's obviously so much more powerful. She has to know in that moment, this is A, the last time I'm probably seeing Luke, and this is not really him. I mean, and, and so because it would have been time she should be able to feel that the force is a feeling yeah, more than right. a, you know, a binary thing. So and she they has don't to touch, know. right? I mean, they don't mm-hmm. hug, they don't right. do anything. But I have one question. He kisses her. I want to see if you guys can answer this for me because it's the one thing I don't know and it's the one thing I'm most excited to figure out. I'm most excited, I don't know. But she, he hands her something? Yeah. Yes. What is that? The, it, they those were, were in his, the... Those were Han's dice. In, Thank you. I, yeah. Thank you. They were so, his dice in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. He took it when he went and 
went into the Millennium Falcon. Okay. So, but the other thing he does, though, he kisses her forehead. Mm-hmm. Well, he hands her physical object, and then yeah. well, they stay, disappear. They too. disappear later, like well later. Yeah. So I didn't know those belonged to uh, Hans, but I assume they did because Kylo picks them up and they disappear. And for me, that was like the final moment of all of your family's gone. That's now it's you're on your own. Like you have now. There. Yeah, I mean, because like Leia they, says again. He's not my son anymore. I know. It, I think in that moment it felt like there's no reconciling this ever. That's kind of what I felt. Yeah, because they were hanging. I mean, you saw them. They were hanging. I, so I'm going to be honest. Luke took them out. This of is my Millennium real Falcon. honest moment. Both when Luke went into the Millennium Falcon cockpit and when Luke was talking to Carrie Fisher, I was crying. That's and fine. So I could not. I like I, when it happened. I was like, wait a minute. What was that? Your oh eyes gosh. were so like oh, I was. I was definitely doing this during the Millennium Falcon scene. <laughs> what and, you guys? And so like I just missed it. And then she, they fall to the ground and disappear. I'm like, wait, what? What? I know he handed her whatever that. Right. I don't know what happened. Right. And yes. I just lost. it. I cried right. when Yoda and Luke were talking. I, I don't know why. I te- no, I honestly I teared up when Luke went side. into the Millennium Falcon. I definitely teared up. It was I amazing. See, I didn't tear up at all, but I think it was like when he sees R two. It just was like. Oh, oh yeah, and because R2 didn't talk like the whole last movie because I guess he's like sad, and they say that he basically has done nothing since Luke well, left. He put himself in, in And then he's like tippy-tapping around, like super excited. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was great. Can you do an R2-D2 no- noise? <laughs> yeah, you do the noise and I'll do the movement. Okay. Hi, I'm R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that so was better. That this better is from Jedi uh, Robbie's. Rabies. I think it's. Uh, I think it's. It's Robbie. After we've met him, I'm pretty sure it's Rabies. No. <laughs> it says, "Did it feel to you guys that the film was trying too hard to have too many bait and switch moments?" No, I don't think so. I don't really feel it was, it was any trying, bait and switch. It was just it was switch. Hard to just be its own thing. <laughs> it I sound, think that was more. It sounds like you guys. You, the twists weren't bad. You just didn't like the resolution to the twist. It wasn't like they didn't work. Like you were probably surprised. Snow you know got what? cut in half. I don't. I don't. For me, I don't think I even really mind the resolutions. I mind the. I just. I really don't like that it was such a clean switch. I got you. Like I really feel like there could have been. There could have been ways where answer answers happened or 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 things that we know were transitioned better than just forget about it and now this is the new normal. Like I, th- I think that's my biggest problem with it. Yeah, uh, I mean, so Luke dies. He gives himself into the Force and whatever. Yeah. I, I wish that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, I wish Han didn't die in the last movie. And maybe, maybe it's just because I love those characters and I want to continue to see them live on. But the reality is that's not true for anybody. Right. And so, um, yeah, there's parts of me that are just let down on like an emotional level, like on a personal level. But as the movie kind of stands alone, if it were just its own movie, I think I would, it was great. I mean, visually, like when, when she hits hyperspeed and slices all of that fleet in half, that was by far one of the best cinematic like moments in Star Wars. In Star Wars. That's the other poster. Okay, so that's yeah. my poster. Someone does because it's like that V of light yeah. coming yeah. out of that split ship, and then all the like little smaller ships have shadow being cast. That if it was moment printed right on like there, silver, right? Oh, Kevin man. Tong. Oh man, Kevin Tong. Right? I need yes. you to make wait a minute, hundred percent. Wait a minute. Let's just make it. Wait, wait. This, this, that character. What's her name? Holdo. It's Holdo. Vice Admiral Hodo. Okay. Holdo. Hodor. Hodor. <laughs> Hodor. Vice Admiral Hodor. Hodor. <laughs> um, Holdo. So, I'd watch Laura that movie. Dern. But yes, so, Laura Dern. Yeah. She's still alive. What? Right? Because she hits light speed. Yeah, but and she's she slammed. She crashes in. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a suicide kamikaze. Bomb. So that's, okay, I know that. And feel like, feel like that's how I read it in the yeah. film. But now I'm thinking, like, if she's hitting light speed, does that mean that she's actually that? Like slicing through, but like, not. Yeah, but she, but she maintains, like. Uh, it's possible. Like, I mean, they don't ever resolve that. Like, I think the assumption is she's dying yeah. by I doing think, this, but. Yeah, they resolved it when she's slammed into the other We ship. don't ever see. We don't see debris from that ship, Exactly. That's what I'm saying. All we see is the light from her ship hitting light speed, and then it's splicing all the other things. I'm just wondering, 
We'll never get an answer to that. But I'm just wondering. Like, well, he might. She shows up in the guys, other movie. I, she's like, hey, guys. Much like in El Camino Christmas. <laughs> at the very end, this guy. Hey, I got shot in the chest four times. Can you believe that? Okay, so I actually want to connect what we were talking about. I want to connect both these things. Because Creeder uh, Designs was also saying Crider. that Laura, Laura Dean, she's a treasure. and uh, Dern. Dern. Yep. Oh, it is okay. Paula Dean is a treasure. It is though. Dern. <laughs> Paula Dean is a treasure. <laughs> it is Dern, <laughs> but the thing is, he misspelled it as Dean. So I was just reading it out of his sentence. Um, we'll fix that. <laughs> Paula Dean is a treasure, though. But yeah, no, she's not. Laura Dern uh, is a treasure, and then he, she. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. He talks about the fact that you weren't supposed to like her until the jump and that kind of stuff. But I want to connect the thoughts. I didn't think there was a lot of bait and switch. I thought there were a lot of characters, and I think that the. Basically, I feel like the franchise can kind of get whoever they want to to be in the film. And so what happens like mentally when I see these people who are recognizable, I assume that I should be paying very close attention to them because they're going to be very like critical. Sure. But some some of the characters that were like very, Benicio del Toro, they were very they they weren't necessarily like as critical to the story or as important. Yeah. And I think it almost like confused me a little bit because I was, you know, we had a, a there were, well, there were a couple of Game of Thrones characters. Um, but like, what's her name? Um, that was the, um, I can't remember her name right now. She had the two little buns on either side. Leia? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she changed her hair. Anyway, yeah. but Del Toro, Laura, Laura Dern, like they, they were characters. Are you that, talking about she was one of the rebels, like one of the commanders? She wasn't a commander. She was, um, I don't know who you're talking about. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, we're okay. not going to lose time on this. But the point doesn't is, matter who. some of the names are so recognizable, but the parts were so minimal that it confused me when I was watching it. So I don't think it was bait and switch, but I think that I was expecting something else just by the caliber of the person. Right, yeah, like they baited you, but then they switched it up and didn't have... <laughs> No, I, I hear you. Later on. Um, I hated Laura Dern. I I just didn't like her at all. So I felt she looked, I felt like she was from the Hunger Games. That's what it felt like. To okay, me. I so I felt she like, like she felt in that. You, she felt I don't universe. understand. Maybe yes. That's, that's Lord. That's, that's her daughter. That's Carrie Fisher's daughter. Yeah, Billy Lord. Yeah. Then who's? Yeah, that's Billy Lord. The dog is named Gary. Gary, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, so I feel like. Laura Dern's character, it could have just been Leia. Like, I don't understand why we, like, I understand that Leia. Well, kind of, I don't understand that because all of a sudden, the next thing we know, she's at the door with a blaster. Like, why is she back? So Luke has a moment on Octo where he feels Leia not being okay. And I know that's part of his inspiration, his rally to to come back in. So I feel like that's a a piece of the plot puzzle. Um, But at the same time, I also know the intention was for the next episode to be very Leia-focused. So it's a way to put her to the side so Luke can be the center. But she's back, though. No, I understand, but the, why she gets way late is so that she's not the because otherwise she would be the she focus would be of the, the focus, movie, yeah, right. And so you make this loop. The theory had been Han movie, Luke movie, Leia movie, yeah, and life happened, right. But and so I think that's a way to put her to the side. Also, you get the for, you get the moment of showing how powerful she is in the force. So you blow her out, then you put her in the hospital bay for a while, so that it's now Luke's movie, and then you bring her back at the end because she's alive to come into the next. Right. Episode. And it's she's supposed gotta, she's gotta be alive to yeah. Poe is supposed to also learn a lesson because Poe is supposed to learn to trust people and be willing to like kind of like play his part and not always try to be the hero right but we know how that would have worked out right well, so i was gonna say so one thing that stands out to me on the second watch i didn't catch this the first time but yeah. you know in the second watch the big thing is that they take out the dreadnought at mm-hmm. the beginning and you know uh there were huge casualties and he gets demoted because of it rose's and he, sister he shouldn't have like Paige, risked those people right? yeah he shouldn't have risked all those lives trying to be a hero but the reality is if that dreadnought hadn't been killed then after the first light speed jump, the dreadnought would have just blown him out of the sky anyway. And blown up the planet, the other planet. Yeah, because of the dreadnought, I assume if it has the range to blow up a base on a planet, it has greater range than Snoke's ship had. And so to the reality the, is... their ship? Yeah, well, because the Snoke's ship is the one that's firing yeah. on him, right? Yeah. So the reality is that if Poe had not have done that, the thing that got him demoted and kind of led to him like developing his character, you know, that piece of it... They would have all died. Right. So that's just something that stood out to me. I, and I don't know if I'm supposed to take anything but from I think, that. I but think the learning lesson, though, because we talked about this yesterday, is the, the flip side of that is had he gone full bore with his plan and the latter part of the movie, they all would have died. 
Fair. So like it was, it was like it was a, it was a flip. It was a back and forth of okay, yeah, way to go. It was like a backhanded like pat on the back, like okay, that actually ended up working out. And then a reverse pat on the back. Okay, I'm glad that I didn't do what I wanted to do. Like it was one of those. I think it was a learning moment for both. Uh, this movie felt very Poe heavy in my in my mind, um, and I think uh, he played pretty dyna- like a pretty dynamic range. Because he was very funny in some moments, but then yeah. he was also very angry in other moments. Sure. Um, and a little saucy. Did you see him looking at Ray at the end? Yeah. Because at the oh, end, yeah. I was like, what just that's, happened between that's those two? That's the next, next, over and over that's the next love interest, I saw, for sure. Your, your, oh, yeah. Yeah. Your, your, yeah. your screen was, was just stuck. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that might have been a projectionist <laughs> issue. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see. I didn't catch that. I'll catch it tomorrow. I didn't realize that they... I guess I didn't re- remember or realize that they hadn't met, met formally. Yeah. But yeah, he was. It was like Joey from Friends level. Like, how, how you doing? doing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, swooping in. Um, okay, so last. But she didn't hate it. No, no, not at no. All. She, she didn't hate it. it. Well, that's okay though, because Finn now is with Rose. Yeah. So now we have a, a love square. What? Because we have we have Rose, we have Finn, we have Ray, and we have yeah, Poe. And think... Poe and Rose already but know each other. Like yeah, they were together on the. Battle. But what I'm saying is, you're trying to say there's drama because I'm saying be... I think I thought I thought Finn and Ray, but now it seems like Finn and Rose. Okay, Finn and Ray, and Ray BFFs forever. Yeah, yeah they're, absolutely. Yeah, they're so fr- there they was no, friend zoned it. There was never. I never got any romantic thing from the two of them. Someone from said that Force Rose Awakens. seemed more like a like a fan girl as opposed to romantic. She was. She was well, absolutely she was, in the was. But I'm just saying. Towards the end of the film, do you think that was changing? Yes. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yes. She That's loves romantic, him. Yeah. I don't think he loves... I don't think he... Like, I don't think... So people talk about the kiss, right? Their kiss. I think that was more just from Dummy. her. Mm-hmm. From her, not from him. Like, it wasn't... You mean in that moment just then? Yes. You mean... Well, I mean, sorry, not just then. Like, at the, when she's, like, still saying the speeder thing or whatever. Yes. And, yeah. yeah. I don't think... I don't think it was a mutual like we're in love. We like. I mean, so you don't honest, think they love each other? I think Finn loves her. Like I, he cares for her, but I don't think on the level of like. I think it's romantic. In that moment, it by the might way, be, but I don't think it's. Well, I think it's romantic. It's in mostly that from he, her like, side right now. Could have left her in the speeder. Well, right, I think that's I the spark. Tr- I guess I'm trying to understand yeah. why. Yeah, that, that's just the spark. The that's spark. where it starts. It doesn't. The, the whole movie, no. But in that moment, it starts yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were arguing that he was that they weren't there. But what? That they weren't a romantic thing by the end of the movie. I thought that's what you were saying. I don't know if they fully are yet. Okay. See, that's why I think. I mean, I think I would say that they are. That they, that's where they set it up to be. I'm gonna. So one thing real quick, and I know that again, it wouldn't have fit with the point because the point was don't be don't be heroes. So that was one of the big points. Is like we don't need heroes. Sure. Per, you know, pres- persevere, preserve. <laughs> but we don't need heroes with preservatives. I was fine with Finn sacrificing himself. Like in that, I was so excited when he was. Did heading. you not like Finn? Is, is that no, why? No, I like. No, I like Finn. But I'm just saying it felt. I was just rooting for him to like take out that battle yeah. ram. I was. Did everyone think he could have died in that moment? Yeah. Yeah. To me, I did. that's one of the strongest power points of the whole movie. Because what Marvel movie do you get to the end and someone's racing towards their death? Yeah. And you go, oh, they're gonna, they could die. Yeah. And that I moment, I went, it. oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Finn's gonna die right, right. now. It could and this be the moment happen. we see him and die. To me, that is that's a Star Wars movie that's now working on a different level because I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. That's and true. I love that. Sure. That was like, I'm going that's... in that moment. I'm going, Ryan Johnson, you did it. Because there's no other person who makes this movie, and I go, "What's going to happen?" At like the I, right. my That's thought true. process and then was, Rose saves the day. Right. I didn't see right. that coming at all. So, right. so to me, so everybody is talking about how that was the worst part of the film is their whole side plot, and to me, that was it's one of the most complete, uh, like stories. Of the film, people like, hate it's, the casino that's and they're it. That's, attaching it to that's them. That's exactly it. I I don't hate their side story as much as the fact that their side story centered around Canto Bite, which felt like a cheap way to bring the cantina back or the, the music yeah, was even like, kind of similar. So, but they had to go there. So, and I've I said this. Yeah. I've said this to you guys. I'm gonna say it for everybody to hear. I feel like they needed to go there because it made Finn care about the resistance, not just Ray. Yeah, because he was seeing what was happening yes. to, yeah, yeah. yeah and that, potentially it, it sparked, like, it, it, new resistance it, members. Exactly, right. at the yes. end of the film, that's what we're left with, right? Right, right, right. So, um, all right, so one more comment. This was this is a bit broader, but then I want to ask a couple, like, very pointed questions for specific moments. How long have we been going? We Forever. should probably start yeah. rapping. We'll yeah, rap yeah, it. so okay. that's what I'm saying. So this is the last comment. It's broader, but I think this comment kind of 
is what a lot of people are saying that they're feeling is that, uh, and this comes from Mark Bowen, uh, um, gosh, um, as a movie, it was good as a star Wars movie. I'm on the fence. Fight scenes were great. Battle scenes were really the only time I felt like I was watching star Wars. Uh, I want to see it again to, uh, after I digest it, but I'm not in a rush. So he's, wow. uh, that's, and that's, coming from Mark, from that's, him, that's a, a big statement. That's a big statement. So, um, but again, I think that's what a lot of people are feeling, but, um, I do think time is gonna definitely be a, uh, a so factor I think t- in I how think we view time it. Will favor, time will favor well on this film, for sure. sure. I mean, I, I, I think you're right. That, that's a really good point about Empire Strikes Back. I didn't know that history um, element, but I think the more we let this stuff settle in, yeah. some, of the, uh, some of the harsh you know, Band-Aid ripping will, will subside. Yeah. Some of the stuff we will, uh, we will start to learn more. Like, like for me, accepting that, that this wasn't a new force element um, by, you know, that whole uh, spaceman, uh, spacewalk deal. Let's but, just do one round of low point, high point, and then if someone's, so just low point in the movie, high point in the movie for you very quickly. If someone says yours, you have to say a different one. So um, just, I, and I'll go last. That way I can do cleanup. But Andrew, why don't you go first? Low point, high point. High point of the movie. <laughs> High point, of, I'll start with low point. Low point of the movie was probably when, um, and it's weird because I actually really liked the joke, but uh, but it was a low point because it's a Star Wars movie. But the, um, uh, uh, still on hold for Hux. Like that whole, yeah. that whole, that whole back yeah. and forth joke. It, it was great because it felt like Poe because we, that's how we got introduced to Poe initially. Sure. Um, but it went maybe one of those or two of those back and forth too long. Yeah. Um, it, and seeing Huck kind of how he got flustered and it felt, it felt more Monty Python or like National Lampoon style jokery than it sure. did, um, than it did Star Wars. And then, but I mean, uh, that's weird cause that's kind of like one of those, your weakness is actually one of your strengths. I don't know. High point. But, um, high point was back to back, uh, battle. Cool. Okay. 100%. Low point, high point. Uh, low point. Um, I'll say high point. I'll go first with the good. Uh, high point was was Luke and R two. That whole interaction was freaking great. Um, low point was. I think just the low man. There's a lot of stuff that I wasn't happy about. <laughs> Fine. Um, Phasma. <laughs> That's a good one. Just, just being underused. Yeah. Just was kind of just an afterthought in both films now. But had a very Broadway-esque metal cane. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of tap dance all It didn't happen. All right. So low point, high point. Um, Phasma yeah. was a huge letdown for me. Yeah. Low point was probably um, the CGI and all of the Canto Bite stuff, all the wide stuff. So when like you see the, yeah. the horse animals, the space horses running, the city itself in wide, it, it felt very prequels esque. I was gonna well, say, did well, it feel like it's like not even that? One. I think the CGI is better in the prequels. Like I thought it was actually not as good sure. as the rest of the film. All of a sudden, it looked like I'm not in the same quality right. as everything else I've seen. Right. It, it did feel very and, reminiscent of Phantom Menace. And like, so that that was a little. And I don't mind CGI. It just felt like it was bad CGI yeah, sure. in the moment. So sure. that stuff bothered me um, as much as I could be bothered in a movie. I'm personally give a 10 but yeah, um, sure. my high point I want to there's so many but the one I want to point out is one I feel like not a lot of people are saying at least in the conversations I'm having one of my favorite moments of the whole movie is the reveal that Ray's parents aren't anyone mm. and that she comes from anywhere and 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 her parents are dead yeah and they don't matter and that and, and it drives home the point that got lost I think with the prequels that the the good can come from anybody. Luke was a farm boy. Yeah, maybe, maybe he had yeah. this epic story, but in in that first movie, that one that I'm standing at my TV screaming at as a yeah. little kid, it's because I could be Luke in that moment. Yeah, he was nobody else. And to me, it it brought that feeling back to me in Star Wars for the first time it, since that moment, mm-hmm. because anybody could be her in that moment, and I loved it. I totally loved it. Kylo said, "You don't belong in this story. You come from nothing. You're nothing." Mm-hmm. That was great. That was probably. That's probably the best delivered line. But you're, in the but you're film not nothing me. to me. That whole thing is yeah. so good, and yeah. so to me, that was one of just that felt like quintessential Star Wars to me. Yeah, and I loved it. Um, <laughs> low point for me would be following Luke around the island. I know why we did it. Yeah. Um, but it just I hated that sequence. 
Uh, high point for me was that we have our first uh, topless person in Star I'm just kidding. That's, not, <laughs> that's in that section of scenes. Yikes. Uh, I can't miss it. Um, Actually, low point for me might be when he's <laughs> drinking that milk gro- like creepily while he's staring at, like at Ray. Ray can't even like, watch. She's just like, ugh. And he's just letting it drool the down his beard. That's that gross. Those animals make. And just the animal looks at her afterwards, like, yep, it's yeah. happening. <laughs> you watch this. Don't take your eyes off. <laughs> yeah, so again, it's just low gross. Point. It's <laughs> real gross. That part of the film. Um, and then actually, I think my high point would be uh, Luke and Yoda sitting side by side. And uh, there's a line that Yoda delivers. I don't remember the line exactly, but basically, it's like, uh, you become the thing that they outgrow. And that's the burden of all masters. And I that was the high point of the film for me. Yeah. Frank Oz. Mm-hmm. So can yeah. we, I want to talk about just one more thing because it reminded me of all of the things happening on the island. What did you guys think of Ray's whole journey down into the hole and seeing the mirror and all that stuff? I thought that was when I was going to get to see what I thought the answers to my questions yeah. were. Um, and now looking back on it retroactively, it was her seeing herself, which means she's the be- she's the starting line. Like she she doesn't have a beginning. She is the beginning for herself, which totally plays into the sure. fact that her parents are not like. It's just like uh, Anakin, right? Like he right. he was a manifestation of the midichlorians That there was no one before him yeah. in that in his lineage. She is that for him. Sure. Same. I mean, I didn't hate it. I also, like, I actually thought this, the sequence was handled really well because I couldn't tell where she was because... Which one was her? Yeah, because right. sometimes the people behind her would start motion and sometimes yeah. she would. And so that was all very cool. I was, like, on... which Like, the fog was being wiped away. I was, like, on the edge of my seat. Well, it looked like yeah. multiple people coming in yeah. and then it turned into one. But then it got followed because, like, she comes in over it and then it, that gets immediately followed with her relaying the story to Kylo and I thought that scene was awesome. Sure. Like I thought that scene was really great when they actually like reach out and um, so that, that ends up being a very pivotal part of the film right because that's when she then confronts Luke and then she leaves and so I was 100% on the edge of my seat for all of that. Yeah. Every, yeah, 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 yeah. The whole No, the whole thing. That oh. whole where they're interacting with each yeah. other. Yeah. It, like from the moment like the fog was clearing and you're like oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I, was exactly. leaning, yeah. I was leaning physically yeah. into it. Yeah. yeah it the perfect. Luke and Ray fight was great. But Spencer, what did you think about the mirror scene? No, I loved. It. I love all the Force Vision stuff and all the movies. It's some of my yeah. stuff I look forward to the most. The Force Awakens. I probably watched that scene where she has her vision like uh-huh. twenty or thirty times. I just love all of that. I thought it was just spectacular visual storytelling. Did okay. Sorry. Last thing. I'm done because I'm gonna stop talking. We we we're because we'll keep talking forever. When Luke, when she opens a lightsaber yeah. on Luke, okay, and she goes to swing it, Luke falls. And it looks like he uses the force to hold himself like two inches off the ground. Yeah. And then, and then he lowers himself yeah. in. I'm not sure what that means, but I feel like it's important. The fact that I, just, he just has control of the force. And he's yeah. not going to retaliate. I mean, right. he's just like, he was, he's, I'm, I'm avoiding this. Pass- I'm not coming at you. He's right. passively. Just, he's like, yeah. ho- and he, like he lets wanna, himself relax he into it, I guess. He crack his head on the on the He's rocks. gotten a little old. I don't know yeah. if you've noticed. But no, but it does, it does feel like a moment of restraint. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Of, and he could destroy her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, close it up, Andrew. Okay. Star Wars. <laughs> okay. That's how you close it up. Um, man, so we have so many more thoughts. You guys probably have so many more thoughts. Uh, jump on the Slack channel. Add on to the, um, add on to the conversation. There's already hundreds of, of pieces of information in there. If you were one of the people that we read, thanks for contributing. Um, throw your thoughts in there because there's a throw lot to your be thoughts. said. Throw your thoughts. Um, there's a lot to to, uh, to to be talked about in this film. Go see it if you haven't. If you watch this whole thing and you haven't seen it, you're dumb. Me- message us so that we can give you something because <laughs> yeah. that's stupid. But I mean, uh, I'm not giving you anything <laughs> except a scolding. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, man, go see it. <laughs> Hop on. Go to mf1podcast.com/slack to join the Slack conversation. Before we head out of here, though, Spencer, um, thanks for joining us. First of all, no, yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Um, it's been a blast. And uh, you've got some coins over there, some tokens, and you're going to help pick our categories for next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just right. hand them out just randomly. Blindly so here's what we do. Token. Okay. Up next, we're going to draw some tokens. The tokens portion every week is when we get to find out exactly what our categories are the following week. And uh, since Spencer is sitting across the table, we have handed him our tokens. Yep. He's going to hand them out physically. Go ahead. Patrick has art and design. I have toys and games. Hey, TV and film. TV and Mixed film. Congratulations. Thanks, dude. Because um, I have some stuff in the mail. This is very appropriate. Stuff yeah. in the mail. Um, 
So, Spencer, tell everybody where they can find you on the internet, where they can follow you and hear all of your thoughts, Star Wars and film and otherwise. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Film Dispenser, um, like a Pez dispenser, not like my name. Yep. Um, and then on Letterboxd, which is a social media platform for watching movies, I am log in all my hundreds of movies a year and my reviews, usually like Twitter level reviews are usually nice. pretty snarky, but, okay. uh, but they're fun. So check me out on Letterboxd and Twitter. Awesome. Uh, and uh, you know where to find us. Search M of One yeah. Podcast on all the different platforms. Yep. Find us on the website, M of One Podcast.com. And you can find show notes and links there. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's below us right now. Like this video, share this video, comment on this video, subscribe to our channels, subscribe on iTunes. Tw- video, uh, video, 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 right. video. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Other yeah. places or yeah. anywhere else? Oh, yeah, if you're listening only to the audio version, you miss the fact that we're all in full costumes right now. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, Luke is dressed up as Slave Leia <laughs> the whole time. It's great. But he wasn't wearing a bikini top. He just used his his beard hair to like wrap under his breast. Yeah. Because I am dressed up like Ray, and I'm viewing him as always Kylo. And so I, yeah. that's true. Yeah, I see. I have it's shirtless. Yeah, yep, exactly. I see. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, sorry for now, everyone. <laughs> oh no, you can you can uh, support the it's show. Weird that he on... braids his chest hair. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> you can support the show on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash M of One podcast to support the show there. Uh, like I said, join us on Slack. There's a ton of archives of, of incredible guests, incredible shows. Um, go to M of One podcast.com. But for now, we're going to get out of here. I'm Andrew. I'm Patrick. I'm Luke. And I'm Spencer. Peace out. Bye. Hold on to your butts. Yeah. Yeah.